The ocean is starting to fill up with robotic sailboats that have stiff wings for sails, allowing them to sail into the eyes of hurricanes and send back live video while they're at it. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that a clever new type of robotic craft called a sail drone has been making waves recently. This comes just days after Defense News revealed on December 12th that the U.S. Navy has started testing sail drones as part of its plan to integrate new unmanned systems and artificial intelligence into its fleet of operations. The typical sail drone is a 7-meter-long sailboat with a robot brain that can stay at sea indefinitely thanks to electrical power provided by a combination of wind and solar power. Sail drone hulls are usually very low and narrow, and they use stiff wings as sails. A similar robotic sail drone was programmed to sail into the eye of Hurricane Sam in October. This almost suicidal task was completed by a slightly adapted sail drone called Sail Drone Explorer SD-1045, which have been modified to handle winds of 140 miles or 225 kilometers per hour. SD-1045's smaller wing helped it to survive the brutal weather while it sent live video and other data to its controllers. An earlier version of the sail drone was tested in the Antarctic in 2019, but that one could only sail downwind. The new wing on the new generation allows the drone to run and sail upwind like a traditional yacht. After years of a shadow war between Iran and Israel, in which both sides use clandestine strikes against each other's commercial and military ships, a British guard and a Romanian sailor have now been killed in a suicide drone strike on an oil tanker. Here are the details. The Associated Press reports that the UK and US joined Israel in saying Iran was behind an attack on an Israeli-operated oil tanker that killed two people, and have vowed to respond, calling it a violation of international law. U.S. Navy explosive experts believe a drone strike hit the tanker off the coast of Oman, killing a British security guard and a Romanian shipworker. The strike hit the bridge of the tanker Mercer Street on the night of Thursday, July 29th. It marks the first known fatal attack after years of assaults on commercial shipping in the region linked to tensions with Iran. While no one has claimed responsibility for the attack, Israeli officials alleged Tehran launched the drone strike against a ship that was being operated by an Israeli company. Iran denied the allegations and said Israel killed the ship workers in a false flag attack designed to show Iran in a bad light. The attack comes after years of tit-for-tat attacks in which Israel and Iran use clandestine methods to attack each other's commercial and military ships, using limpet mines, drones, and other methods to cause damage. A U.S. official speaking on condition of anonymity said the attack appeared to have involved several drones, including a so-called suicide drone, which was presumably responsible for pressing home the attack itself. Britain is launching its most advanced polar research vessel. Here is what you need to know. The cutting-edge polar research ship, the RRS Sir David Attenborough, which the British public attempted to name Bodie McBoatface, has set sail for the first time. The 122-meter-long and 22-meter-wide vessel will conduct sea trials before being handed over to the Natural Environment Research Council in November. In 2021, it will embark on its maiden voyage to the Antarctic to study the effects of climate change. The Polar Class 4 icebreaker will be able to break 1 meter thick ice covered in 20 centimeters of snow up to speeds of 3 knots. Its diesel electric propulsion system was chosen to minimize the environmental impact of emissions and noise. The Attenborough boasts state-of-the-art facilities, including accommodation for up to 90 scientists and crew, two six-cylinder and two nine-cylinder Rolls-Royce Bergen diesel engines, a helipad and hangar for two helicopters, and a lifeboat and rescue boat. The Attenborough will travel with the workboat Erebus and the cargo tender Terror. It has a moon pool, a vertical hull that makes it easier to deploy scientific instruments, such as remotely operated underwater vehicles in rough seas or ice-covered polar waters. The aft deck houses a large cargo crane and winch system. This can deploy a CTD rosette, an oceanography instrument used to measure seawater, and heavy rock drills that sample soft sediment and rock up to 2,000 meters underwater. The British Antarctic Survey originally put the Attenborough's name up for a public vote, and the public responded by choosing Bodie McBoatface. The British government did not like that name, but it has instead been given to the ship's long-range unmanned submarine. The Attenborough will replace the RRS James Clark Ross and RRS Ernest Shackleton. The vessel is named after broadcaster and naturalist Sir David Attenborough. A Bay Area startup that builds autonomous ocean data collecting vessels launches its largest ship this week, the Sail Drone Surveyor. 
The surveyor is powered by wind and solar energy and is designed to map the ocean floor while collecting DNA samples and climate data. The surveyor is designed to spend up to 12 months at sea, according to Sail Drone. It sports a 59-foot or 18-meter tall wing and is 72 feet or 22 meters long, with a keel that draws 13 feet or 4 meters. That dwarfs the 7-meter long Explorer, Sail Drone's previous model. Company founder and CEO Richard Jenkins told Wired, the Explorer has operated in coastal regions in Alaska and Antarctica, but lacks the solar power to map the deep ocean. Only 19% of the world's seabed has been mapped to modern standards, according to UNESCO. The UN agency says a more complete map would help with ocean conservation efforts and facilitate a better understanding of weather systems, sea level rise, and climate change. Wired reports the surveyor will sail from San Francisco to Hawaii after initial sea trials. En route, it will map regions near a series of sea mounts where fish and other marine animals congregate. The surveyor carries sonar equipment that can map the seafloor down to 7,000 meters deep and a device that can detect the speed and direction of water currents 1,000 meters deep. Other data collecting instruments on board include a sensor that will sample DNA from the skin fragments, mucus, and excrement of sea animals. The DNA sensors were developed by the University of New Hampshire and the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute in California. This is how car carrier ships look today. They're big ships, powered by messy diesel engines that produce a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. And they spill a lot of oil and diesel fuel if they have accidents. This is how car carriers might look in the near future. The Ocean Bird is a proposed cargo yacht that would be able to carry 7,000 cars. Its designers say that it will use its giant wing-like sails for general propulsion, saving up to 90% in greenhouse gas emissions. The Ocean Bird's sails are like telescoping wings that can extend up to 80 meters high. Its length is a whopping 200 meters from stem to stem. Its width is an impressive 40 meters from starboard to port side. Swedish shipbuilding company Wallenius Marine announced that it will work with Swedish government organizations to build this giant sail ship. The Ocean Bird is being designed to be large enough to carry 7,000 cars. The shipbuilder says Ocean Bird can make a transatlantic crossing in around 12 days, which is only slightly longer than the time taken by today's fossil fuel-powered cargo ships. When the wing sails are extended to their full height of 80 meters, the ship will have a height above waterline of 105 meters, making it the tallest ship ever built. And thanks to their telescopic construction, these sails can also be lowered, resulting in a height above the waterline of only 45 meters. This would come in handy when this very tall ship needs to pass under a bridge or when it sails through stormy weather. The Ocean Bird's giant wing sails will be made of a mixture of metal and composite materials. They will be twice the height of sails on the largest sailing vessels around today. According to Wallenius Marine, their Ocean Bird concept shows that the maritime industry can bring about major change and that zero-emission shipping is possible if ship designers use wind. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.